Hi, my name is Ian Romanek. Uh, I work in the Open Source Technology Center at Intel, and I'm currently the technical lead of the Open Source uh, OpenGL driver team there. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit today about the, the current state of the art, such as it is, um, for debugging and performance tuning, primarily 3D applications on, on Linux. So I'm going to start by kind of going through some, uh, some brief comparisons of um, Linux and Windows and, and, and what's available on each, both for debugging and for performance tuning. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the problems that developers encounter in universally in, in both um, environments and what they're doing um, since nobody has actually given them a pony yet. And then what we can do to sort of enable them uh, to, to go further than that um, on, on Linux. So <clears throat> on Windows, there are quite a few different proprietary closed source um, debugging tools. Basically, every vendor has their own tool that has a variety of different kinds of features um, and, and things that you can do, uh, ranging from editing shaders in real time to actually being able to single step through shaders and see how they're executing on the GPU and seeing um, what pixels were came from which draw calls and, and doing a fairly robust variety of, of things. In addition, there's some uh, what I'll call driver-assisted debug um, tools where uh, an application can make calls directly into the driver or directly interact with the driver to get, to get some debug feedback. This is through the ARB debug output extension where basically the application renders a callback and when the driver thinks something has happened the app should know about, it tells them. Like if they, um, one of their textures got disabled because it was incomplete or if their shader is broken or, or something like that. Um, but generally there's nothing standard cross-vendor about what kind of information actually comes back from, the, uh, from, from this extension. On Linux, it's quite a bit more sparse. Uh, there are a couple open source tools. There's API Trace, which is pretty widely used in the field, and a few software vendors, um, fairly famously Valve uh, among them, are making some contributions back to that project. Um, it lets you do some similar kinds of things as the closed source tools on Windows, except you have to run your application in this environment and then replay it within a, the API uh, replayer. And then you can stop at any point, in, inspect GL state, look at all the textures, um, edit shaders, and, and do some things like that. Um, but it's not interactive with the application. It's sort of you capture some stuff and then after the fact try to do some debugging. So it's a little different sort of environment. Um, there also was Bugle. Um, the, um, and I'm now blanking on his name, the, the main, Mary. Bruce Mary, yeah, uh, went, I believe, off to go and get his PhD and has stopped maintaining it and it's, so it's uh, kind, of, kind of stagnated. Um, there's also, uh, NVIDIA has their Insight uh, debu uh, debugger that's the same essentially as the, the Windows product, but it's also available on Linux. Um, there used to be Gremity GDebugger, but after they got acquired by AMD, that product got orphaned and, and sort of has, has withered and died. Um, we also, on Linux, universally have support for ARB debug output. Um, Fairly uniquely on open source drivers, you can actually just set breakpoints down in the driver and you know, if the driver is telling you you got an error for some call, you can inspect exactly in the driver code and see, okay, why is it giving me this error and, and, and know exactly why you're getting invalid operation. Um, so in terms of performance tuning, um, uh, all of the previous debug tools are good as debug tools, but where they really shine on, on Windows is as performance tuning tools. And they give amazing amounts of data. I mean, the kinds of things that you would expect out of CPU profiling tools, um, these tools are able to give on, on GPUs. Um, there are also some, some cross-vendor tools, primarily for DirectX, um, 
uh, GP, GPU view and, and PIX, which PIX has been replaced by uh, another product from Microsoft, um, allow a lot of introspection, especially GPU view, on what's going on in the system as a whole. You can see where commands have been submitted, when they actually got to the hardware, when those commands got retired, and kind of get this, this global picture of what's going on with the GPU relative to where things are happening with, with the CPU. Um, there are also some OpenGL extensions that allow getting some, some performance information back out of, of the driver. Um, on Linux, uh, again, we have uh, NVIDIA's Insight. There's Intel GPU Top, which is of very, very mild usefulness. Um, it gives some very, very coarse grain information about what units of the GPU are utilized, but it's, it, it be, it's kind of like just using top to do system performance debugging. Like, it gives you some information, oh, this guy is soaking all the CPU, but that's kind of about it. Um, API Trace lets you do some performance work, but because it's replaying traces, it's not especially useful for performance work. Um, there's a new project that's kind of just getting started uh, called FIPS that puts a, a heads-up display on top of a running OpenGL application and, and provides some uh, performance information live. Um, we also have ARB Timer Query. Uh, I believe at least the Intel driver is going to get support for AMD Performance Monitor soon, and obviously AMD supports that. Um, Galleon-based drivers have a similar performance uh, heads-up display, and through, through the use of some environment variables, the Intel driver can also um, provide some additional performance, performance feedback. So across all of the platforms, there are a set of problems that developers are universally encountering. So we have a large number of the tools that are absolutely vendor specific. And I've heard from a, a number of developers, I really love tool foo, I just wish it actually worked with hardware bar. And all, almost all of these tools, uh, especially the ones available on Windows, they're getting this really detailed performance information out of the driver and they're doing it through undocumented interfaces and back channels and you know, weird kernel interfaces that nobody else is, is really privy to. I'm, I mean, I'm sure that people have reverse engineered it and figured out how to get some of that, that data out for themselves, but it's not, it's not directly useful to application developers. There are a lot of tools uh, that are very DirectX specific on Windows. Um, earlier this year when I was at GDC, I swear if I heard one more person tell me that they wanted picks for OpenGL, I was going to puke. <laughs> um, and pretty much all of the tools also really only give a very narrow view of the system. They let you see performance or debug information about one application. And a lot of times, and this is especially an issue for browser vendors, um, especially and, and even more so as they're implementing support for WebGL, you need systemic performance information, right? A lot of what is hurting the performance of your application is the compositor, the X server, other processes, you know, whatever. There's a, a whole bunch of things interacting together, and you need this more global data um, to, to really be able to, to diagnose what's going on. So what developers actually end up doing in practice, using some of these tools and then also basically rolling their own tools. Um, and there's sort of two classes of, of things that, that people do by and large. They'll either um, collect data in the application and log it somewhere and then have an offline tool that after the fact they can analyze the data and, and see um, what happened. Um, very famously, Valve talked at uh, SIGGRAPH last year about um, the, the tool that they use for this. Uh, um, it's a package called Telemetry that lets them collect a bunch of this data and then after then do a bunch of post hoc analysis. Um, and then the other sort of technique is doing the collection and visualization in the application while it's live. And these generally look like 
purpose-built heads-up display kinds of things where they'll, they'll show um, you know, how many batches are being drawn per frame and, and how long each batch takes and where frame rate hiccups are and, and, and things like this. Um, and everyone says that they do this and they all act like they're happy about it, but, but then when you start to talk to them about how they've implemented this stuff, to me it sounds awful. <laughs> Um, by and large, it involves manual insertion of trace points throughout the application. You know, it's kind of like the old days of sprinkling read time step counter all throughout your code and, and measuring the differences, but it's a little bit more fancy than that. But it's still, you have to manually go through and instrument your code and maintain all this cruft all over your, you know, many hundreds of thousands of line code base. And that doesn't seem at all pleasant to me. Um, then they also have to pick between using sort of generic, imprecise collection methods like using um, our timestamp query to get timing information about things that will then run across multiple vendors or use vendor-specific APIs to get more detailed, precise data, but then they're stuck just being able to collect and get data on that particular vendor's hardware. So, it's a fairly dire situation. Um, and I, I, I don't envy any of these application developers that want to make things go fast on either platform, frankly. Um, so here's the $64,000 question. Can we provide a set of interfaces that will improve this situation dramatically? And, and the real question is, what the hell would those interfaces look like? And we have a, there's a, a bunch of sort of competing goals. So we, we need to get more precise data than what our timer query will give um, about the execution of commands on the GPU. We need to get information about the execution of those commands relative to other things going on in the system. So when the vblank is occurring. So if a, frame, if a game is missing frame rate, how much, what commands spilled over, what was you know, going on around that time that, that made them drop a frame. Uh, and also relate it to different uh, CPU profiling events, right? Because they want to be able to intermix their GPU profiling data and their CPU profiling data so they can see, oh, I spent too long on the CPU doing some work and I didn't get a batch sent to the hardware, so the hardware went idle. So they know to go fix that problem on, on the CPU. Um, and be able to provide all of that data at a system level with some semantic information, right? They don't just want to see, oh, a whole bunch of you know, rendering batches got queued up to the GPU and eventually got rendered. Neat. Um, they need some semantic information, right? They want to know, okay, these are this set of draw calls that came from my application, and this set of stuff that the GPU was doing is um, you know, the compositor doing its thing. Or, you know, some other application, or this was um, the X, you know, where the X render request that I sent to the, to have the X server do, this is when it was actually getting executed on the GPU, and be able to look at all of this together. But then where it gets hard is we don't want to leak information in, about what's going on in the system in ways that could provide security holes, and realistically, if we want app developers to do this, whatever interfaces we make have to be ones that the closed source drivers can also implement. Um, so that, you know, additionally makes it tricky. Um, so w what I want to, to do is find out what these interfaces sh should look like and I know of people that I can compel to go and make this stuff. <laughs> so this isn't the, the, the typical, hey, everyone get excited about my project. It's, well, we need to build this thing, and what should it look like, and then we're going to go build it. So any questions or thoughts? I, I guess I would, I would, yeah. <laughs> So I, I guess I was personally wondering whether, whether you could leverage uh, a mechanism like perf for something like this. I, I don't know how you capture the semantic details that you're talking about, but in terms of the actual collection, right? right. Yeah, and that's, 
And, and I was talking with Rob about that, that yesterday. Um, and it seems like it's almost the right thing, but it, it's sort of tying you know, these asynchronous events and, and sort of the way that you put the, the perf um, trace points in doesn't match that terrifically with how we're you know, executing a pile of commands on you know, some asynchronous processor. Um, but it, right, right, that it's, it would be a part of the puzzle and that, yeah, so, so what Rob was saying is it, it's, it's some information but it's not all of what you want. Um, and so then that's the question is could we just in, instrument some stuff in through that and would that get us, you know, 80% of what app developers actually need um, and then can just spin back around and see, okay, well, what do we need to get you know, the next 80%, <laughs> um, so to speak. Um, and it also raises the question, I don't know, if we're putting in perf trace points, they're gonna be, it seems like they would end up being more driver specific, and so then each driver is gonna have a different set of information that it's gonna give back, and that puts us back in this, this problem of, uh, here where you're using some vendor specific information. I mean, you're going through a common kind of interface, but you're getting entirely vendor specific data. So if you want to do performance tuning on AMD and you get done, it gets, you get it running really well on a Radeon and now you want to do it on an Intel part, you, you almost have to start over. Um, and that's, you know, one of the situations that people are in on Windows. Everyone tells me, I start with card X and when I have it running the way I want it to run on that, I go dig out of the box card Y and start over and then go back to card X and make sure I haven't broken it. And oh, I'm so glad I got out of game development. <laughs> um, so, I, so yeah, I, I think that there is something there, but we need more, we need more. No, I don't know where the mic is. Oh. And are you, are developers primarily interested in um, driver uh, performance and, and making sure that the driver running on the CPU is, is doing the same things? Or are they more interested in um, how the commands are being executed on the GPU, what, what draw calls are related to? Yes. Right, <laughs> all, so all, all of the above. All, all of the above. They want to know what things that they're doing on, so, I'd say that there's sort of three main classes of things that they want to get information about. One is what, what API usage patterns will cause the driver to use a lot of CPU. Where, you know, what sort of, of patterns in shaders will have different performance characteristics. Um, and then also just sort of how different drawing commands pipeline through the GPU and, and what what the GPU is spending its time doing. So that, so um, hi, I deal with Mali. We have a very, very different um, our GPU driver, uh, our hardware architecture right. is radically different yes. to say, you know, most other stuff, uh, on, certainly on the desktop. Um, in order to provide meaningful performance data, you have to teach the developer how the GPU is actually processing the, the command stream that you've given it to it via GL. Right, but if you, but I mean, because, so Molly is a deferred tile shader? Indeed it is, yeah. Okay, I, I wanted to make sure that I was gonna speak about it correctly. Yeah. So, e, so even in that case, you would still be able to see, you know, the timelines would look different than they, than they would look on a, uh, you know, an immediate mode renderer, but I think you would still, if you had the right kind of timeline data, you would still be able to look at that and get, you know, useful information out of being able to, to see, to see the, type line, to the timeline and see, you know, eventually, I, I guess you would need different, different sorts of data because so it does break it up completely differently. It, it does, so for example, yeah. the, the time per draw call is, is almost impossible to get because right. at least the fragment work, 
the so, entire frame's worth is done in one one blob, and you get to know how much time the entire right uh, fra fragment processing for the entire frame took, and, and that's it. So, how does that currently work on those kinds of platforms for apps that are doing performance measurement using like ARB timer query, where they're sort of blocking around draw calls and saying how long does this this region take? We don't impl well. We're GLEDs only, and okay. we don't implement our timer query. If we did, you would see that lots of things take zero amount of time, <laughs> and then the very last thing takes a very long time. Okay. Well, sorry, if our marketing people would beat me up and tell me it takes a very little amount of time. Indeed, right. But, yeah. <laughs> it, relatively, it takes a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I think for app developers to get a, a good performance out of a GPU. They do need to know how that GPU is executing the commands, how the GPU works under, underneath. And they are going to construct an a optimal uh, GLES command stream. Right. The optimal GLES command stream for one GPU architecture is going to be quite a lot different to the optimal on a different uh, right. GPU architecture. But, but one of the goals would hopefully be that, that you don't have to completely re-architect the way that you're, that you're measuring between different platforms, right? You're going to have something. So just simple measurements from the CPU perspective, like I kicked the GPU to do some stuff, and now at some point later it's done. That's going to be kind of common. There's, you know, V blank, you know, that's the same across different. So I mean, there's some very coarse grain stuff that will be the same and is useful, but it's a, the finer grain. Well, and also just getting information out about how much time different, different shaders took. I mean, yeah. that's, that's kind I mean, that's, of a, a universal thing. Yeah, that's, well, I'm, I'm calling that more fine grain, but yeah. I right. mean, that's not something you can measure from the CPU. That's kind right. of right. specific. So that was one of the things that, that we put in, in our drivers, there was a, there's a mode through an environment variable where it will tell you how many cycles um, are spent in each, each shader so that you can figure out, oh, you know, most of my total time is spent in this fragment shader. So then you can go look to that one to, to try to optimize that. And we, haven't, we haven't come up with a good way yet to get out you know, more precise information about you know, exactly where in the shader time is being spent. But that, that seems like the, the next step of, of information to want. Yeah. So on Android, we've been kind of coming from the top down mm -hmm. uh, from doing our performance analysis. We've been making pretty heavy use of the kernel tracing framework and then extending that into the rest of our framework. Mm -hmm. um, and then using uh, this tool that came out of uh, the Chrome project called Trace Viewer, which is like a JavaScript HTML5 uh, trace log viewer, which works pretty well. Um, and we are working on getting some basic um, when jobs fire off, you know, when they're actually executing the GPU and when they come back, information in there so that then we can correlate that to draw calls we see on the CPU and V blanks that are already in there. Um, so that might be a good place to. Right. And is that being instrumented? On a per driver basis, or how? I mean, how are you? Yeah. So the idea is that you were um, one of our graphics developers has created a, a tracing event uh, for GPU, mm -hmm. um, where it sort of has an arbitrary like number of execution like units, and then uh, everything has a job ID, and then the GPU driver will throw an event when a job moves between the execution units, um, okay. and then. You know, you, that job ID, you can also correlate into uh, user space uh, so that then when you're kicking off a render from user space, you can correlate that to what the GPU is doing. OK, so you can get the, the sort of semantic tying of this, right. was, this was doing this kind of drawing thing. And so does that? And I think we actually might have put a name in there as well so that, okay. um, so that you know, Right, so this, you, this you know is, what window or what process right. or so. And does that let apps get system wide? Um, well, it let, it lets the, the it's not an app interface. It's like a system okay. user interface. 
So as the, the user of the machine when you're debugging. Okay. And there's some information you have to be root to get. Right, right, right. Um, you know, like a lot of the scheduling data. Yeah, the, w one of the things that I've helped a number of people try to debug is on this window manager, it goes slow. What's, what's going on? And, and yeah, being able to have system-wide data of, oh, this thing is happening here at this point in time. It's deciding to composite in some weird way right here for you know, who knows why. Would, would have helped a lot in debugging those problems. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'd absolutely recommend looking at the TraceView tool. Okay. Uh, it's run as an open source project out of the Chrome group. Okay. And um, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you see it, you can you know, zoom out a bit and you can pretty easily say like, oh look, there's a bunch of white there. Something's wrong and you can start diving in and right. looking at what could be wrong. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. You, you touched on what I think of as the holy grail, which is what's going on inside the shader. Right. And I know there's limit to what we can do there, um, apart from the stuff that you've talked about. Um, but actually, uh, Eric, maybe you can comment. There's a thing that Android does that talks about, or visually shows you overdraw, and I don't know if this is something that the heads-up display stuff you're talking about can do. Yeah, different, different ones show different amounts of that. It's, it, it kind of varies from, from product to product. Um, there have been some of them Oh, that will, where you will, you can flip it to a mode where what you see is instead of the actual image rendered, is you see kind of a, a live grayscale image where the brighter pixels are the ones that are most overdrawn and and, and things like that. And and some of them even um, go further than that, knowing that you know hardware depth buffering does crazy tricks to make it go fast, and they'll show you know in this region you used this much depth buffer bandwidth because of how the, the high z works and stuff. The Android stuff really only works with our view framework. And so it's the view framework that's uh, tracking overdraw in that case. Mm -hmm. So it's really only useful for app developers who are using the Android view framework. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Ian. <laughs>